Hey, fangirls, fanguys, what's going on? It's Dominic the Prime Time Treasure Hunter. Thanks for coming by to check out another video. Before we jump into the content of today's video, which I think you're going to really like, I do have a few announcements. And number one, and that's why I sound extra excited today. I normally sound excited and happy, but today I am putting on the extra sauce because I just found out that this channel was approved for monetization. Literally moments before I started making this video, I found out. And it's really big news for me. It's not anything I'm going to get rich off or anything like that. It's more just symbolic in terms of, you know, being recognized that this channel has taken off. And, um, you know, for me, I've poured my heart and soul into developing this channel. Many of you who've stuck with me from the beginning uh, know that, know how many times I've been down here at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning making videos uh, just to continue to develop the content and to bring you hopefully uh, useful information. So it's great to see uh, now there could be some ads running and uh, I could take some super chats during live shows and it's really perfect timing because I am going to uh, have a great uh, lineup of live shows that are going to happen uh, starting in January 2019. I have two major interviews that are going to go down on this channel. So uh, I'm going to announce those in the beginning of January. I uh, look forward to that. And there's going to be at least two of them a month is my goal in which I will be doing some interviews. And hopefully some of you I will be interviewing. So if you're interested in being interviewed on this channel by me, let me know. Send me a comment or send me a private message, however you want to do it. Just get in touch with me. Uh, number two, and there's going to be three total announcements here. Number two, this one's real quick, but you could see there on the screen, we are now at 1973 in terms of subscribers. It's looking more and more like I'm going to hit that goal of 2,000 subscribers in the first year. When I started, my goal was 1,000, and just recently I said, you know what, let's go for the 2,000. Let's try to double it. So uh, again, I'll just mention real quick, if you are not subscribed, if you're brand new make sure you hit that subscribe button let other people know to join the channel give a shout out during social media instagram facebook twitter wherever and tell people to come to this channel and uh, subscribe to it if you think that the information is helpful and the last point before we jump into today's content is i've said before that if anyone ever sends me any type of gift i'm definitely going to make sure i give them a shout out and you know this type of video where i'm remin reminiscing a little bit in terms of the development of the channel it's really appropriate for me to give a special shout out to, to Noel Griffith, the farm girl scavenger, one of my original subscribers. She was, uh, um, she had a nice eagle eye and found this comic book. As many of you know, I specialize in comic books and I love Spider-Man, but this one I had never noticed before. I'm not even sure if I have it. I mean, I may, but I'm not sure. Uh, it actually says primetime on it. So uh, how cool is that? And Noel sent me that in the mail. So this one will be proudly displayed behind me. And uh, there's so many people who have sent me nice gifts over the course of the year. I don't put my address down there in the comment section. But if anyone does want to send me something, of course, you know, that's not required or of course or anything like that. But um, just reach out to me. Let me know. And if it's something like uh, Jesse uh, Bellflower, another nice... Uh, uh, you know, a great subscriber to the channel had mentioned, you know, if someone sent me a box or something, I could open it during the show, kind of wait till the show to open it. Maybe that would be fun for some people. So whatever, I'm not asking for gifts or anything, but I'm just saying if uh, anyone wants to, you know, these are all things people have just reached out to me spontaneously. Um, and so I uh, just wanted to mention that, uh, just reach out to me. I'll let you know uh, my address if you're someone who's, uh, you know, been on the channel for a while commenting and I know you and that kind of thing. So um, now let's jump into the content of this video. So just to recap for people who are brand new to my channel, don't know, uh, I like to do these videos every once in a while where I go into the psychology of negotiations between buyers and sellers. And I like to uh, teach you how to use psychology to, um, basically make more profit in your business and, um, you know, kind of outwit, outlast, uh, <laughs> outplay 
some of your um, uh, buyers that you have to deal with because after all it is in many instances like a game and you're kind of going back and forth and people refer to it as the game so uh, when I say that, I'm not trying to sound uh, mean or anything like that uh, by saying outwit and outlast, but uh, it really is like a strategic game that you're playing back and forth, and sometimes there's a game of chicken that's involved in terms of uh, whether or not someone's going to walk away from the deal, and uh, you got to kind of hit that happy medium where uh, both of you could feel happy um, you know, with the deal that's on the table. So... Uh, I use this information if you're wondering, you know, why am I bringing up the term psychology? Because I work as a neuropsychologist, and so um, I like to, you know, take some of these uh, insights that I have about how the mind works and uh, apply it to business. And that's something I like to offer you on this channel because, uh, as far as I know, there is uh, no other reseller that uh, works uh, as a psychologist in any capacity that has a YouTube channel. So uh, that's hopefully something you 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 know you get out of th get out of things when you come over here. So let me take you through this scenario and show you what happened. And uh, I love that this has to do with one of my favorite uh, people that I watched growing up, which is Bob Ross. That's right, Bob Ross, the famous painter. If you have never seen Bob Ross, you definitely need to YouTube him. He is one of, if not the most talented painter I have ever seen. I remember as a kid uh, sitting down watching PBS, Channel 13 back in the day, and uh, Bob Ross just talking in that nice, mellow voice with the happy little clouds. You know, and, you know, he never made a mistake. It was always a, a happy little accident. Um, you know, he was always so positive. Uh, and he was just a master with that brush. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Bob Ross actually passed away from lymphoma. And uh, he's now taken on even more of an iconic, legendary status. So much so that the Funko Pop uh, Corporation decided to make a line of Funko Pop bobbleheads after him. And some of them are quite popular. Uh, these are two that I picked up uh, as part of that big Funko Pop collection that I bought earlier. And depending on which one you have, like there's a Target exclusive one that I sold recently through that collection that sold for about $50. And I have another one uh, on, in my eBay store right now that's somewhere around that price range, like $45, something like that. So it really just depends on whether it's exclusive or not. You remember I talked to you about the... Uh, stickers that would be on the front of the Funko Pops and those would be ones that generally are more valuable. So you'll notice these two do not have stickers. They're not exclusives. So they're more common. They're not worth as much. And so for ones like that, what I like to do is, is make little bundles uh, of common themes. So I put these two together. Now the thing with that, when you put two Funko Pops together, that always means that when you factor in the box weight and the packing material that's got to go inside to protect it, that the Funko Pop is now going to go over uh, 16 ounces so that means it's no longer going to be first class and it's going to uh, jump into the priority shipping range and what that also means and you need to know this depending on your geographical lo location if you are going to send the item from coast to coast so I live in New York so if it's going to go to Washington or if it's going to go to California or something like that I have to know that that's going to be approximately $10 in shipping and so if you do free shipping like I do then you've got to weigh in the geographical location of the person who makes an offer to you. You also have to figure that in in terms of worst case scenario. If it sells to someone from the West Coast, am I still going to be able to profit on the item? Now, I'm already in profit on this Funko Pop collection, so whatever I sell from it, there's Casey sending me a nice message there congratulating me on the, uh, um, on the monetization. So thanks, Casey, for that. Uh, anyway... Um, so I had these items up in my store uh, for, let's X this out, I'll show you what the price was I had it for. I had it here for $17.99. So, you know, if it was something that would have sold locally, you could see there I have free shipping. You know, uh, let's say someone from New Jersey bought it or Pennsylvania, it probably would have cost like five, six bucks to get it out there because it would have been much over the the one pound, like one pound, three ounces, one pound, four ounces, something like that. But if it's going to go out to like California, like I said, it's going to be like 1048. But no matter what you see, I have my bases covered. I'm going to make a profit no matter what, no matter where it goes. So um, let's go over here and see what happened. Well, one night, 
uh, and this was a few nights ago, December 20th. You could see the date and the time over here at 1.08 in the morning. And you might be wondering, why am I mentioning the time? The time is important here, and I'm going to explain in a moment. But it's 1.08 in the morning. Now, that's for me, East Coast. So if this person, it's three hours earlier, sends me an offer, $10 for the Funkos. Now, that makes absolutely zero sense for me to accept for several reasons. One, I have five watchers on this item at the time. Two, if I sell it for $10, I literally will lose money on the item because it's going to cost me $10.48 to ship it. So that makes zero sense. So what I did was I just declined. I did not counter offer because um, even if I counter offered him in the middle, that's only $14. That's still not worth my time. I got to pack up two Funkos. Uh, not that it takes forever, but I'm just not doing it, especially at 1.08 in the morning when I'm hanging out in the primetime treasure pad. There's no way that I'm doing that. So I decline it, and after I decline it, uh, about a half an hour later, he now comes back with a better offer, $15. Now, if I take that, like I said, I'm only going to make a couple bucks on it. If the person was living closer, um you know, might be something you may be more inclined to accept. But, um, you know, like I said, I'm at $17.99, so we're not that far off at that point. We're, um, we're, we're $3 off, so it's not that, that big. However, like I said, this person is in California, so every dollar counts. And so what I did here is I counter-offered him at $16.50 right here. Okay, so there's my counter offer that I sent over to him. I let him know. I said, listen, there's five watchers on this item. It's probably going to sell at the current price soon or to someone geographically closer. But since you made me a respectful offer of $15, uh, I will give this to you for $16.50. I'll meet you halfway. If you want it, it's yours. Now, as you'll see in a moment, what he should have done is accept this offer because this is a good offer but instead of doing that and you can see i sent this out at 1 41 a.m he then sends me a counter offer at 1 47 a.m for 15 50. now here's what this whole video is about is this very moment this is where i've got to take you through the psychology of it and you have to try to think like the buyer what is the buyer possibly thinking so many times we are focused on what we're thinking as the seller but put yourself in the buyer's perspective what do we know for a fact one we know the person seems to want the item because there's been multiple offers and counter offers that have been made on it made on it that's number one number two we know that he knows that it's late at night for me because I have mentioned in these negotiations that I'm shipping it from coast to coast. So I mentioned that free shipping from coast to coast. So uh, And the person can see that it comes from New York anyway. So that person knows that it is late at night over here for me. Uh, it's uh, almost 2 o'clock in the morning and knows that likely I am probably going to go to bed at any time. So... This is why it's important to do what I'm going to say in this situation. Normally, I tell you to be responsive to people and um, you know to get back to them relatively quickly. However, there are times where you could selectively, at least for a brief period of time, use non-responsiveness to your advantage, especially around this time of year, which is Christmas time. So this is a time where someone, you know, really is going to want to get their items out as quick as possible. They're going to want to get them out the next day so uh, so to get there in time for Christmas. Because it's December 20th. If I send this out priority, it's still going to get to this person in time. So here is what I did in this situation. Rather than counter-offering him back or accepting this offer or anything like that, all I simply did is wait and not respond. Why? because I'm trying to create some anxiety in the buyer. And I'm trying to get the buyer to think that, hmm, he's not responding. He had been responding for a while. Why is he not responding? Maybe, most likely, he went to sleep. And why is that important? 
This is why I, I suggest when you are having negotiations with buyers with items that you have watchers on, that you make sure you mention that there's multiple watchers on the item because they can't see that anymore unless you have multiple items listed within the same uh, listing, like if you have five of an item or six of an item. Now, eBay does not show that, at least on the desktop. The only place they show it is, uh, is, um, is on the phone. So uh, if the person uh, is not looking on the phone, they're just looking at the desktop, they're not going to, uh, they're not going to see that. So uh, that's why, so I mentioned that so that he now has to worry that if I went to sleep, there is a strong possibility that when he wakes up in the morning, that this item is going to be gone for 17, oh, I'm on the wrong thing, for $17.99. That's what his concern is going to be. So the time that uh, he sent that counter offer to me is 147. So I'm literally sitting there waiting and I'm waiting and I know that this is just based on experience. This is going to require about 10 to 20 minutes of waiting for this to work. I mean, you could take it out a little longer if you want to. You could take out a half hour, but this is something I've used in many situations and it works. So here's what happens at about 17 minutes later here, so 2.04 a.m., boom, great news, your item sold to that same person who is making all these offers and sold for full price, $17.99. And that's how you strategically use non-responsiveness to get full price for your items during a negotiation like that. This person made a cardinal error of not accepting a reasonable counteroffer at $16.50 and trying to drop it down another dollar at the wrong time. And so you've now got to use that to your advantage. That's why I talk about just, you know, outwitting, outlasting, kind of like the, you know, the game survivor, outsmarting, that type of thing. Um, that's the strategy. And then in many ways, that's the fun of negotiation. A lot of people get upset about uh, low ball offers and that sort of thing. And no one likes to get them and stuff, but there's ways to deal with it. And I talk about that a lot on my channel. There's lots of negotiation videos that I have. So hopefully this is helpful. If Noelle is still watching this, I know she's going to tell me, we'll just do calculated shipping and you don't have to worry about all this stuff. But I need to do a whole video on why I do free shipping and not uh, calculated shipping. And, um, and anyway, if I did that, I wouldn't have, be able to have this type of fun. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, it's a fun experience when something like that happens and then the person turns around and gives you the full price. So I hope you found that helpful and that if you're in a situation sometimes, uh, where you feel you could use this, uh, to your uh, advantage, certainly do so. Let me know if you ever used it and it was ever helpful for you. If you remember, come back to this video. Drop a comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions about this approach or any other uh, negotiation approaches that I use in my videos. Please let me know. Make sure you crush that like button. Smash it real hard down below. Subscribe to the channel. Join my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. We're very close to 5,000 members there. That has shown tremendous growth. And I'm really, really making a huge effort to um, invest some time into developing my Instagram, um, uh, my Instagram following, and uh, I'm almost at, at a thousand uh, followers there now, uh, which is a complete rebuild of my account after I lost it earlier this year when I was at 1,200. So I'm about back to a thousand right now, and I'm really making use of the stories uh, section of Instagram and uh, and the videos and uh, communicating with you uh, throughout the day there. So uh, I love the interaction with all of you. Uh, don't be shy. Make sure you comment here. Reach out to me, however, lots of different venues. And I look forward to seeing all of you at the next video. Take care, everyone.